Uh, Anna, it's good to have you back again. I, I want you to pick up from uh, where uh, Carl stopped and something that uh, Angela really uh, did bring up quite uh, clearly in her keynote address. How do we resolve this mismatch uh, between hope on one hand, aspirations and fears, and sometimes uh, disappointment that uh, the system or the world uh, does not seem to work for the good of uh, young people. This is not something that is uh, limited to Uganda or any particular African country, but more especially in 2020, it's something that we've seen across the world, whether it's in uh, South America, in North America with the rest uh, violence and protests in May and June, but also in Europe with the, uh, with the movement against uh, statues and the legacy of uh, colonialism and uh, all these other ills. Do you think... <laughs> Uh, for young people, 2020 is that year where they feel, you know, it's you fight, you either fight now or you lose the fight. Thank you. Good to be back. Um, mm. Well, I can tell you what we as CAS are doing um, mm. because I think this is um, an option. This is one of the solutions that can contribute. Um, to also le uh, less violence, as Carl was describing it. I think it's important that we create the space for youth participation. So mm. we that we also have already our networks also to the political elites, um, to the parties worldwide. It's not enough to just empower the young people. Many young people are already bright and empowered and uh, have amazing skills, but they do not have the space where they can uh, prove them, where they can be of need. So I think it's also for us to open uh, the space to interlink young, young talented um, people with those already in power, with the decision makers, makers to also allow them to enter um, into the different sectors and uh, to be, um, you know, just to, to show what they can, because I think young people really um, do bring a lot uh, with them. Um, I mean, just take the, all the digital sphere, how much uh, young people do know about it and innovation and how much uh, we uh, can learn from each other. By the way, I, I kind of tend also to put myself into this framework of still um, belonging to the young generation. Um, but yeah. Kwezi, if you, you also allow me, you know, young people being, um, the question of young people being worried about their future. Um, and this plays into your first question on the leadership. Um, mm -hmm. And this is where you can really see and feel the difference. How has the leadership um, reacted to the crisis? How does it manage the crisis, right? And here's where um, you can really see the difference because actually um, all the theory would tell you that um, handling a crisis, um, the most important thing about it is communication, communication, communication. And I think this is, um, you know, the role also for the government and for the decision makers to play. Um, you need to be transparent in your strategies. You need to be transparent in your plan, how you want to overcome this crisis. You need to explain why you're doing a certain things and why uh, and other things should not be done. So, it, and I think by doing it, um, by really, you know, basically um, bringing on board everyone, all your, um, I mean, you can talk about uh, your team as a leader, your followers, or the whole population. You can just uh, release the stress and you can just, uh, you know, again, um, place this hope that is really very needed, especially uh, in the young generation. Um, so this is, again, the responsibility for the young generation um, that actually uh, urges uh, the decision makers to um, communicate in the way that young people understand.
understand and that they feel, okay, now it's really on us also to invest in our own future. And I'm sure uh, most of the young people uh, are not distracted and they really want to contribute it, but it takes, of course, um, some endeavors to, t um, to just bring them on board. Thank you. And